Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of In Your Wheelhouse with Todd Rosales. I am Todd Rosales and this show is brought to you by our, our organization, Wheelhouse IT. Uh, this show is going to be a weekly series where we educate you on what's going on in IT, some things that you can use to help your business. Essentially, uh, I'm bringing my friends in from the industry to speak to them about what they're doing and how we can help people work better remotely, more securely, and really take advantage of the situation that's going on right now. With me today, I have one of my first colleagues in the IT space, someone I've known for quite some time and has been a dear friend of mine ever since we met. Uh, he is now working with Infoblox, and I'll let him explain what they do because I'll entirely butcher it. Please welcome my good friend, Lee Cherry. Lee, thanks for joining us. No problem, Todd. My pleasure. Good to see you. And yeah, it's uh, been a long time since uh, you and I have known each other. I think about uh, 10 years now or so, right? Yeah, yeah, 10 years, something like that. And we both started as uh, inside salespeople in this organization and have come a long way since. But yep. I mean, you and I worked on countless amounts of projects together, mainly from an Office 365 flavor. You know, uh, talk to me about those days. I mean, I know you're doing something else now, but, you know, Talk to me about going back to general IT, some of the things that you've done for clients and just really some of the industry trends that you've seen over the past sure. 10 years. So, you know, if we take a step back in the history of, of Microsoft Office 365, you and I were working on it when it was still BPOS, if you remember those days, right? And um, they, they changed it to 365. And I think that you and I worked really well together, just, you know, considering um, you know, the the network of clients that I was working with and the um, the skill set that you brought in, in really kind of helping to break down uh, the benefits and features of migrating from an existing exchange environment to Office 365, um, the capability of having that work from home or work from anywhere um, capability as opposed to just being reliant on a one physical machine or box, right? Um, you know, back then when we were working uh, together, the Office 365 platform allowed for, uh, you know, even before COVID-19, uh, work from home capabilities, uh, you know, utilizing um, all different types of devices. You could be in um, you know, you could be in the Midwest or you could be in Madagascar or you could even be in other parts of, of the world and still having that that capability of, uh, um, of checking your email or keeping up to speed with your business. So it's been a long time, but getting to um, what's on my background here on Infoblox. Um, so I've been at Infoblox for about two years now. It'll be two years at the end of July. And we are... Um, the market leader in what Gartner coined DDI, which is short for DNS, DHCP, and IP address management, right? So DNS and DHCP, two protocols that are critical to every single organization today, right? Because DNS and DHCP are the protocols that get you to the internet, right? Um, primarily, most organizations today are running that on um, the same Microsoft protocols that they have been for decades now. What Infoblox will, go, will do is we come in and we provide a modernized or re-architected approach to managing DDI, where you'll have a single pane of glass, um, centralized management tool, still running DDI the way that you currently run it in your environment today, but at an enterprise approach, right? So I say, think of like what VMware or VM did for the physical data center, and also think of what you know, SAN architecture did for storage, or you know, next generation firewalls like you know, Fortinet, Palo, and Checkpoint have done for the firewall market today. We're simply doing the same thing, except we deal in the uh, critical protocol services of DNS, DHCP, and IPAM. So, so Lee, I appreciate all that, and we got to keep in mind that your your clients are a little bit more sophisticated than some of the ones that we work with at Wheelhouse, working up, you know, with some of the biggest companies in in the area, and we don't have to mention them by name, but some of the biggest companies that you've seen in the state, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of that's great, and and let's break that down a little bit for people so they understand it a little more. Uh, essentially, you know, for lack of a better term, you guys are really essentially a security company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys fit into that cybersecurity portfolio. So cybersecurity has been a hot topic for a while now. It's 
it's made it so far as I have CPA friends who have said, who started coming to me and asking me about cybersecurity because for CPAs, they, in, in their industry rags, it's one of the number one topics for them to bring up to their own clients. So people outside of our industry alone are focusing on cybersecurity. Actually, there's a law firm that we work with today. I received a phishing email from them and I had to, you know, call them up and tell them. So, you know, can you tell people where you guys sit in the realm of cybersecurity? Because I sure. think when people look at it, they think mostly, like you said, firewalls, edge protection, everything else, but they don't realize that there's so many other holes where, where threats can come in from. Absolutely. So Infoblox has been around for two decades now, right? So we still primarily are focused on the core DDI. However, that core DDI of DNS and DHCP particularly, even IPAM has become um, organically um, a security focus. So when I'm meeting with customers and we've, we, you know, we're introducing the product, um, a lot of times they um, they end up we start on the network side of the house but they end up incorporating security because particularly to um, I, I will talk about our IPAM capabilities we have the ability with um, a discovery tool that's built in to see every layer two layer three device um, for you know IE switch router and firewall um, so anything that has an IP we can see we can see it down to the even to the MAC address to the subnet and even the open switch port. And it has a capability of look, of, of sniffing out for over 60 plus different third party vendors. So think of how impactful it is to someone's business. You're truly getting that visibility of what is in your network. So we can, uh, we can address certain security functions, I would say indirectly, right, on our core DDI platform. Now on the security side, where we have been, you know, transforming into on more of a network security tool is we have an entire security platform that we call Blocks One Threat Defense, right? And that security focus is built on DNS. It's using what you already have today, which is the DNS platform. Um, there was a report that came out a few years ago, I believe it was by Cisco, that said over 90% of all um, malware attacks utilizes DNS as its attack vector. And why is that? Because DNS needs to remain open um, in order for its users to get to the internet and the bad guys know this, right? So what we can come in to do collectively is not only provide the architecture, the re-architecture or modernization of their DDI environment, but then also layer security and focus it on DNS. A lot of the security products that are out today that do a phenomenal job are more geared towards your perimeter security, your, you know, your NGFW, your AV endpoint, et cetera. But what we're focusing on is wrapping a layer of security around DNS, protecting DNS at its core, hardening DNS. And then also what we have is we have a, 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 a key aspect of the solution that's an ecosystem play that will provide an outbound API into many of the leading NGFWs, um, as well as AV endpoints, SIMs, um, help desk tickets like ServiceNow. So that helps with a lot of the automated workflow process, as opposed to having a help desk tech or you know a junior admin constantly looking at manual um, you know alerts and they say today about four percent of all companies actually are able to quarantine and analyze them on a daily or weekly basis so we're we're helping customers to automate that entire stack of their environment but again our focus is at dns it's not at perimeter um, we're focusing at that void that um, you know that many organizations today are vulnerable to because um, i think the statistic is about 75 percent of organizations today still do not um, actively monitor, secure, or manage their DNS. So so one of the things that you and I always did really well, and a lot of times in the lunchtime conversations and things that we've had, is we come up with these acronyms to help people understand, not acronyms, sorry, uh, analogies to help people understand things. So if you look at a corporate network as a fort, so to say, right, um, that fort, you know, the DNS highway if you will would be the road that goes in and out yes you've got your walls up everywhere and you got everything else on the perimeter but there is a, the main gate that has to stay open because traffic needs to go in and out right. of it right, right um, there's a gate there's a gate there but if you have a heavy enough vehicle you can easily break through that gate and everything else so if we looked at, at what infoblox actually does to me, it seems like it is a much better security gate, but it's also the armed security that's on the inside of it. Should any threats get inside that they're going to take care of that? Would that be right. a fair analogy? That's a fair analogy. And the way I would uh, actually compound on that is many customers, uh, and, and I know this, they, 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 they think of, and the way I think of security as a minefield, right? There is no one all be all solution. There's no brass ring. Unfortunately, IT security, uh, you know, continually has to evolve. 
And any organization would know that having a multifaceted approach to security is the proper way to go. Um, the way I the way the way I think of it is again is a minefield. You have to have, you know, your your five or six mines that the bad guy has to to, to step on before they actually infiltrate the fort. And then they have to step on a couple more while they're in on the while they're inside the fort. And then on the way back out, it's a reverse order, right? And having those different layers of security will allow an, or, an organization to, you know, properly, you know, track, quarantine, and stop that attack from happening, right? So we play a very major role. But again, all we're all we're doing, right, is we're we're enriching or enhancing the security posture of an organization's st uh, stack of security solutions, right? We're no way, shape, or form replacing anything, right? So I just want to make sure that it's clear there. But but your analogy of the highway and the Ford is absolutely correct. Good way to put it. No, I, you know, you know, I love my analogies and everything else. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> um, you know, on that note, you had mentioned that cybersecurity is always changing, right? You've got bad people out there that are working harder than the people trying to counteract it, and we've got to keep up with those people. Um, would you recommend to people out there, and, and obviously you and I are extremely biased because we're in the industry, but you, would you recommend people looking at, especially if they're smaller and they don't have an in-house staff, manage security solutions? Because when it comes to cybersecurity, if you just put in like a Mac, I mean, even in a small business, if you were just to put in like a McAfee or you had firewalls and antivirus and all this stuff, and you just kind of set it and forget it, that that's really not going to be best case scenario for your business. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, you know, uh, for smaller companies that don't necessarily have the, the budget to have a security team or a um, in-house security person, absolutely a managed service would would be the way to go. Um, you know, an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? So um, especially in days of security, I mean, now more and more smaller organizations, um, you know, are being contacted by uh, federal, federally re regulated programs, um, you know, and for instance, like Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, and, you know, requiring these smaller organizations if they deal in those in those particular worlds those fields or those verticals that they need to be you know uh, compliant on hipaa they need to be compliant on certain you know credit carding policies and if they're not and they they're audited they could be fined hundreds of thousands of dollars or even worse so if they don't have uh, the wherewithal as an organization um, to manage their own security, absolutely, uh, a managed security uh, solution would be a way to go for for definitely for the smaller organizations out there. Yeah, I mean, I think you and I both come from from places where it's always been let people focus on their business and let other professionals handle the technology for them, and that's something mm -hmm. that we've lived every day. You know, something that we're really big on here at Wellhouse is Microsoft's Modern Workplace offering. It's it is a core of our managed services offering, and you know, a big part of that is Windows Virtual Desktop. And, and you and I have seen the trend for a while of people bringing their own devices for work or, or wanting to work off their different devices. You and I talked about the different computing devices that we, we have. And even for the most part, there's a lot of people that might have a corporate assigned desktop or laptop, but still want to be able to access information from phones and tablets and everything else. In this new world where we're heading to this homogenous experience across all your devices with a virtual desktop or with cloud solutions, how important is it to not forget about your own corporate network? As you know, as you said, you your your so info box will go out and will sniff every device that's connected to the network and everything else. How much more important is it to have that network security to ensure that a lot of these foreign devices coming into your network are secure and are not going to be uh, detrimental? Well, it, it, it's extremely critical, um, you know, because many corporations today have uh, corporate mandates and uh, corporate rules and regulations as it, it related to their network, whether they're certain rules or procedures or policies, right? Um, so it is absolutely critical to um, secure um, or modernize that foundation, um, you know, and that's part of what our offering entails, right? You know, it's part of what <clears throat> the core DDI can can provide and in layering the security, the, the blocks one threat defense security piece that I had mentioned as part of that, what we're able to do is lock down certain DNS focused security policies for all users, regardless of where they are. So if a user is on HQ, he or she has the same policies and procedures as a user like you or I who work from home that might be thousands of miles away from the corporation. 
Um, you know, it's very important to do that because of different states and different countries. You know, we look at the emergence of GDPR. We look at the emergence of California's Privacy Act, which I'm sure we'll see more and more states over the next couple of years um, start to uh, roll out those plans. And that if what we do here in Florida is different than California, is different than New York, but the company is headquartered there, we need to be making sure that the corporation is abiding by those local rules, laws, and regulations. On right now that you work with a lot of companies here in the state of Florida, and you know it's unfortunate that our numbers are spiking back up. A lot of these companies had made plans to go back into the office, and that's just not happening right now. So remote work seems like it's going to be something that's going to continue for a while, given the organizations that you work with and the size of them. I can imagine that there's a, a spike in interest in what you guys are doing right now to make sure that they can support their remote workforce. Yep. Yeah, um, you, you're you're absolutely correct, Todd. Um, we've we've been seeing um, a uh, an interest um, in you know some of the capabilities that we can provide to help um, you know work from home strategies. But one particular story um, is we have a client um, that has been an Infoblox customer for for many years now. That it's in the midst of refreshing their architecture onto our our, our new generation of uh, appliances. Um, and one of the critical aspect of that um, is the um, is 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 the refresh to ensure that they have optimal uptime for their ever growing user environment. Which, under normal circumstances, the users are actually within um, the, uh, the the corporate environment. But given um, you know what is going on with COVID nineteen and just the overall um, you know health of these uh, of these particular users. Uh, they have altered completely to a work from home strategy for the foreseeable future. So not only is the refresh important for them to get on the newer generation of our platform, but also now as as kind of a sidebar is ensuring that they have utmost um, connectivity to third party applications that these users are going to be utilizing while they're working from home. And all that comes to D and all that goes back to is to DNS, right? So. So Lee, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people when they they started their remote work solutions for COVID nineteen that they kind of just piecemealed some stuff together based on you know different programs that would help them work from home. A lot of people adopted Zoom. Some people looked at that you know RDP protocols or VPN tunnels. Being down here in Florida, we have an extra thing that we have to worry about. We're in the midst of hurricane season too, so if you are using RDP or a VPN, if the power goes out of your office, you may not be able to access that. Right? Where solving that with a lot of the Microsoft modern workplace solutions. But, you know, from a security standpoint, from an info box standpoint, is there any piece of advice that you give to people in Florida to help them prepare or even recover from a potential storm? Well, I, I, I'll kind of circle back to what I was saying at the beginning that don't, you know, DNS and DHCP, um, you know, don't forget about them, right? You know, I, I refer to them as the forgotten children of the network. And, you know, if, if I asked any IT professional what happens if DNS goes down and everything goes down, right? So why do we continue to treat that protocol as the redheaded stepchild, right? You know, DNS is really the spark before anything, right? It's, you know, the bang before the big bang. And if you're running it like it's being ran from 1982 as opposed to 2020, um, then there needs to be a look at modernizing uh, it, that approach to DNS, DHCP, as well as IPAM. Um, the rest of the architecture, um, whether it's server storage, uh, you know, Microsoft services, um, you know, SAN architecture and firewalls, et cetera, have all been modernized. Don't forget about DNS and DHCP, right? You know, I mentioned 75% of all organizations today um, still do not actively monitor or manage DNS, and over 90% of all malware utilizes DNS, port 53 or um, uh, route 53 via AWS um, to carrying out um, attacks. All right, man. Oh, I agree with that statement. You know, we're at a point in time in 2020 where email is probably more important than phone lines, right? So and making sure people treat their DNS line accordingly, I think is very important. But you and I, we're filming this on, what, Thursday, July 2nd. It's the end of the day. The holidays, yeah. Tomorrow. Let's go hang out with our families. And anything, you know, let's promote you and, and anything else that you need to talk about before we get out of here. Sure. Um, again, Infoblox, we're the market leader in DNS, DHCP, and IP address management, commonly known as DDI, re-architecture and modernization. 
Um, again, Lee Cherry, I'm the account executive for Florida, and I am a South Florida resident. And um, if anyone is interested in learning more from an educational or an awareness perspective, uh, please contact me, lcherry at infoblocks.com. Uh, Todd, I just wanted to thank you and Wheelhouse again for the opportunity to talk today. And um, obviously, this is probably going to uh, to be released after the 4th, but happy 4th to you, your family, and to everybody that watches this. Thank you very much, and happy 4th of July to everybody at home. We hope you enjoyed another episode of In Your Wheelhouse with Todd Rosales. As always, I'm Todd Ro Rosales, and this has been brought to you by Wheelhouse IT. If it's not in your wheelhouse, don't reinvent it. We'll see you next week.